for reaching sure. out to me. It was so good to hear yeah. from you. Um, Thank you. You have, you know, I, I, I there was a glimpse of, of what I got from your story, from the co- correspondence that we had. So yes. um, I'm excited to get into it and to for you to share your story. Thank you. I'm excited as well. <laughs> Yay, good. So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to start with how this all started with you. When did this infertility journey start for you? When did you know you needed help around how old you were? Um, give us all the details. Yeah, so um, I met my husband back in 2008. Um, we started trying to conceive right off the bat. Um, he has two older children, um, two boys. So I became a stepmom instantly. And um, I knew from the very beginning, pretty much since I was knee high to a grasshopper, that I wanted to be a mom. Um, I had a pretty good foundation laid out for myself with my mom. So I can attribute um, my want or need to be a mom to her. So um, I'm one of three siblings. I have an older sister and a younger brother. Um, And just like I said, just from the very beginning, I had that yearning to be a mom. Um, And it took us quite a long time to get to, um, you know, asking out for help. Um, I think we were both kind of not necessarily turned off by it, but we didn't really want to bite the bullet and say, hey, you know, this isn't quite working out for us. So I think we need to, you know, reach out to a um, medical professional. Uh, so we started trying to conceive in 2009, I would say late 2009. And um, I kind of knew something wasn't quite right um, with my body, but I didn't think anything of it. Um, I mean, my cycles were pretty much online. Um, I was anywhere from a 30 to 32 day cycle, um, you know, a flux here and there, but um, pretty consistent. And then just knowing that my husband had had two children from a previous marriage, um, I didn't feel like there was going to be any issue with getting pregnant. And as the years went by, um, you know, two, three, four years, and I was like, mm, I don't think this is right. And um, my husband was in the military and um, he had had a vasectomy after having his two children. And then before he got out of the military, he chose to have a reversal. So previous to him getting together with me, he had had that vasectomy and a reversal um, and he was given the green light. There would be you know, no issues. He did follow up um, um, semen analysis and everything came back great. Um, so there was no question that it, you know, it wasn't him. Something had to maybe be wrong with me. Um, so I went to visit my OB and, you know, went through all the blood work and um, everything came back completely normal. And he suggested, he was like, you know, let's just do a couple rounds of Clomid, you know, just to see what happens. And nothing happened. You know, Mother Nature Other than came the and terrible, went. Other than the right. terrible symptoms, oh. right? Oh, I hate this. Right. And the horrible two week wait. I mean, uh, it was exhausting. And I was like, this isn't working. And he was like, well, what are your husband's numbers like? Cause he knew that he had a vasectomy and a reversal. And I was like, well, he hasn't, you know, had that checked in a couple of years. Maybe it would be a good idea to get that looked into again. Well, we went and saw a urologist and he ran out of his tests and everything. And it came back that it was, it was pretty significantly bad. So, oh, wow. um, he had motility issues. He had low testosterone, um, but the urologist didn't think it was going to be something that we would necessarily need any type of further intervention with our fertility plan. Um, and he suggested we were good candidates for IUIs. So uh, we went into IUIs. My husband was put on Clomid. Um, he also had to um, take a plethora of vitamins and supplements. Um, to, you know, kind of help increase his testosterone levels, which would in turn create more sperm, whether they were fully functional or not. Um, Just, you know, more little guys would help in the end, give us the best result we were looking for. Um, So in March of 2015, we underwent our first IUI and I ended up getting pregnant. And um, we, it was a very quick, um, pregnancy. Um, I was only five and a half weeks along when um, we were following with blood work. 
uh, when we noticed there, my numbers just weren't where they should be. Um, and then of course um, I ended up miscarrying. Um, so that was my first blow to the heart. Yeah. <laughs> um, I felt really defeated and, um, you know, I went with my, my best instinct and I said, well, it worked, you know, the first time, why don't we try it again? So we tried again. Um, we gave my body um, three months to recover, and then we started, you know, the process of IUI again. Um, I was on Clomid this time. Um, previous to our IUIs, I was on I think 50 milligrams of Clomid, and this time we went to 100. Um, this time there was um, the first time I had one one good lead follicle, and then this time we had two good lead follicles. So I was hopeful, and I, you know, I just went into the mindset of this is going to work and crazy enough it did work a second time wow um but i had another chemical pregnancy wow. so um this is kind of where my ob was like well maybe we need to run a little bit more you know hormone level on you and see you know what's going on and i was like no i was like you know let's just go ahead and keep going with what we're doing this is working i don't see why you know, it would be a big deal to not continue. And he went with my instinct and we did two more rounds and um, they were both completely negative. Nothing came about. And I was like, okay, I think, you know, we're going to have to look into this further. I trust you, you know, let's go ahead and see what my hormone levels are. Um, I came back with the elevated um, hormone level in my TSH um, and my thyroid. Um, and I was considered hypothyroid at that point, oh, wow. barely borderline hypothyroid. And I was like, okay, this is weird. You know, I never had this issue before. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of friends and family members that have endocrine um, issues, um, but I never, like, I never thought there was anything wrong. Like I felt completely normal, um, but it did stick in the back of my mind. Maybe that's why I wasn't able to get pregnant. <laughs> So, um, we went ahead and pushed for the next steps and thankfully enough, we were referred to, um, a doctor, um, here, I live in Ohio. So, um, a doctor here in Ohio, his name is Dr. Stephen Williams, and I will forever be so grateful for him and his, his nurses, um, because he actually found something that no one would ever be able to find. Wow. Um, so we went for our consult and during our consult, he said, you know, I want to see your baseline and do an ultrasound. And I said, okay, went through did my blood work, did an ultrasound, you know, everything looks great on my ultrasound. You know, I went through the tests of the SHG, the HSG and, um, everything came back completely normal. Great. Um, but my blood work came back and I was severely hypo or hyper thyroid. So I went wow. from hypo to hyper. Wow. Um, so he was like, I've, I've never seen anything like this before. You know, usually you're diagnosed, you're, you know, if you're hypothyroid, you have Hashimoto's or if you're hyperthyroid, you generally have Graves disease. Yeah. Um, and mine was so severe that it wasn't even registering on the spectrum. It was so hyperactive. Um, I was then referred to, um, an actual endocrinologist, not just my reproductive endocrinologist, but he was like, I need you to go see, you know, this person. And she diagnosed me right away with something called subacute thyroiditis. And the biggest thing with it um, comes miscarriages because my body can jump from one hormone level to another in any given month and I'll, I'll never know it. Um, so wow. I was put on a pretty heavy um, treatment in order to conceive, um, we finally got my body to the point where um, everyone on, you know, my reproductive team felt comfortable moving forward. Um, so I was again put into the hypothyroid category, and she said, as long as you stay hypo, you know, you'll be able to conceive because I can regulate it with medication. If ever I'm hyper, um, that puts me and whatever baby at risk. Uh, for miscarriage, um, because my heart could beat um, really fast at any given time. And you know, as well as I do, everything that happens to me um, can potentially happen to that baby too. Yeah. Um, when you're generally in distress, baby can be too. 
Um, so with that being said, um, on June 18th of 2016, we started our IVF process. Um, we went through another um, HSG and SHG to make sure tubes were clear, everything was free of any type of polyps or anything in my uterus since I had had two previous miscarriages. They wanted to make sure there wasn't anything that was going to stand in our way of, um, you know, our proper conception. Um, so on August 6th of 2016, we transferred two embryos. Um, this location grades embryos differently than what I was used to. I thought it was going to be, you know, like A or AA or AB, um, that type of scale. Well, they grade them on a scale of one to three, one being the best, three being not so great. Um, so let me backtrack. I'm sorry. So during our egg collection, we collected um, 14 um, eggs, 10 of which were mature, and four became embryos. So if that kind of gives you any type of idea, my husband's sperm was not, not as great, but um, still did the job. So we did ICSI, um, given the fact that we have male factor. Um, I was 33 at the time of egg collection. So my eggs were 33 years old, essentially. Um, and I got a positive, like the earliest that I ever thought I was ever going to um, at what's equivalent to 11 DPO. So we did a three day transfer. Um, the only reason being that he didn't wanna wait till five days was because we only had four to work with. So he was like, you know, I wanna get them, you know, back into their natural habitat. Um, so they can flourish the most instead of sitting in a Petri dish and being monitored. Um, so I, I trusted him and um, we did the three-day transfer and that's what gave us our daughter. So one stuck. Um, Yay. And that was, you know, the best thing that have ever happened to us. Um, you know, I felt like we had finally won against infertility and you know, it's kind of like sticking it to infertility. <laughs> right, right. So, um, That's great. Yeah. Did you, did the idea um, of pregenetic testing ever come up? Yes. So given, um, so I need to preface this. Um, my husband and I have seven year difference. So my husband is seven years older than me. Um, and uh, we did our own, like they did genetic testing on us. Um, as individuals and nothing came back that was questionable to him. And the fact that I was still young and, um, you know, my hormones weren't terrible. Um, my thyroid was being managed. Um, it was left up to us to do PG, PGS or PGD. They did both at this facility. Um, yeah. And I just, I, I decided against it. We, well, we both did. And um, at first I was like, you know, maybe we should you know, but then after my own little research, I was like, well, you know, they kind of have to manipulate the embryo anyway. So I would be worried that maybe it wasn't a true test. And at the time there really wasn't a whole lot of uh, research being conducted on embryos and I just didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. So sure. I just left it, you know, up to God and it was God's decision and it was in his hands. And yeah. I obviously trusted him and he had led us to this point in we just said, we'll just see what happens. And I shouldn't be living by that, but it is what it is. And that's what we did. <laughs> that's faith. Yeah. There's so, nothing wrong with yeah. that. Okay. Very good. Yay. And so now how old is your daughter? Um, she is, she'll be four um, in May. So May 3rd, she'll be four. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So, um, okay. So you were very happy with your doctor. It sounds like, which is really yes. awesome uh, to find a good RE is, is not easy sometimes. No. So it's so good that you found one. And so you decided to stay because you had three more, right? Um, we still had two more. So out of the two four, more. we transferred two and then got our ah. daughter and we still had two more that were on ice. Gotcha. Um, and as luck would have it, um, we went in, what was it? Um, I think we did another, yeah, we did um, our first frozen embryo transfer to try to conceive again for baby number two, um, September how, how of 2018. Far? Okay. So about two years later. Okay. Um, well, two years later from our initial consult, but um, a year later. 
um, oh, from the birth of which my born. daughter, Tamsin. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> yes. Um, and then um, I ended up pregnant. I think I was four days past. Um, so this embryo was frozen at five days. It was a five day embryo. And then we had a six day embryo. Um, they wanted to watch it grow um, and give it the chance to be frozen. So, so we transferred the one that was a five day cause I had, you know, done my research and played Dr. Google. And I was like, oh, the five, you know, the five days is gonna be the best one. So let's just choose that right. one. <laughs> so I chose that one and um, I had um, another positive pregnancy test. So we got pregnant. Um, and then on the 1st of October, I, um, lost that baby too. Mm. So, wow. um, and it wasn't anything that, you know, it just, it wasn't a healthy embryo. So, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Cause everything was still, I mean, obviously the embryo wasn't, you know, a new embryo. It was the same ones from our daughter's, um, IVF round. Right. Um, let's see, 2018. So I was 36, um, in 2018. Um, and then I decided, well, let's just revisit another IUI and see what happens with that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, we did our fifth IUI, um, in May of 2019 and it was another chemical pregnancy. Mm. And as luck would have it, my thyroid, um, took a very, very downworld spiral. And um, I ended up getting what's called a thyroid storm. Um, so I was in and out of the hospital. Um, they were having a really big struggle trying to level out my hormones. Um, and if you know anything about hyperthyroidism, um, my resting position heart rate was anywhere between 150 to 160 beats per minute. Um, so with wow. it, with it accelerating like that, um, it was a pretty key indicator as to what happened with that pregnancy. So again, through infertility, you feel very defeated. So in that moment, um, I was consumed by not only losing our embryo um, prior to this IUI, I lost this IUI from something that could have possibly been prevented had I been monitored correctly. Mm -hmm. So with that information, um, I took it upon myself to see about transporting our remaining frozen embryo to another clinic here in Ohio. Okay. Um, it was nothing against um, Dr. Williams and he's since retired. And actually funny story, um, Dr. Williams actually delivered me when my mom um, delivered me in the hospital. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Bring it full circle, huh? Yes. Yes. That's why I was like, I am forever grateful for that man. Um, wow. That's so cool. Yeah, it is really cool. He actually got to meet my daughter and saw my mom again. And it was just, uh, I don't know. Nice. It's just a, a weird feeling, but really cool. Very cool. Um, yeah. So then um, we did our, went ahead and transferred with this new clinic. Um, we did a similar, but different protocol. Um, I didn't want as many hormones because I know with my um, flux and hormones, um, with my thyroid, um, you know, he, he trusted, um, all of the evidence that, you know, was pretty much going against me going in for another round. Um, he just wanted, you know, to be this, to be as seamless as possible and as stress-free as possible. Um, and he didn't put me on any type of, um, progesterone and oil. Um, I was on suppositories this time and as gross as it seems, I think it worked out better this way than doing the injection because the injection hits your body a lot faster and harder than a supplement or a suppository does. Um, the way that it was explained to me, obviously it goes directly into the muscle and it um, distributes throughout your body. Um, instead of more locally, it, you know, goes throughout your entire muscle uh, endocrine system. So I was like, well, let's try this instead. <laughs> yeah. And it worked. So um, I got pregnant with my son and um, the rest is history. So I have two kids from the whole IVF process. 
<laughs> Yay. Yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness. That's a lot. <laughs> so, that is a lot. I mean, you, you guys worked really, really hard and there's, it's funny, a few of the things that you've said, like there's a seven year gap. Mono and I have a seven year gap. He yeah. has two, two girls, two boys. Like, it's just yep. so funny. Um, there's <laughs> similarity. Um, yeah. If this hasn't been fired, um, what do you encourage them to do? Like if you have it in fact and gonna have it but they're in the beginning process of this all what would you say is needed for someone who has you know I would say more more specifically hyper um being a thyroid oh goodness I would say the biggest thing is being your own advocate um I know going through the whole entire process I felt like I was crazy and I was losing my mind um just having that support um, with my husband and especially my mom, if it wasn't my mom and my dad, rather, um, if it wasn't for having that, you know, bring me back and ground me, um, I, I would have lost my marbles a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say first having that, um, that support is definitely number one and key. Um, the, I guess the, the last thing I would suggest is just listening to your body and you know, voicing to your endocrinologist or the professional that you're working with. Um, you know, if you feel like something's wrong, I would trust your instinct. And, you know, just because you want your levels to be checked doesn't mean they shouldn't be, you know, just to have that peace of mind um, is really the best advice that I could give. That's good. And I think it's very encouraging for others to hear that you were able to be successful and build your family, even with, you know, the issues that you were faced with with your thyroid. Thank you. Yes. I, yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So looking back, is would you have done anything differently um, now that you've gone through all of this? Um, you know, that whole thing, like what I know, you know, if I knew then what I know now kind of right. a thing. <laughs> um, would you have told yourself anything differently or have done anything differently? Um Yes and no. A part of me wishes maybe we didn't do so many IUIs and would have just gone straight mm -hmm. to IVF. Um, but then I'm not sure that my body would have shown up or, or showed out the way that it did. Um, you know, I wouldn't have wanted to go through IVF and then, you know, something go wrong in the middle of the process. Cause I know what that happens to a lot of women and it's, it's very frustrating. It's financially draining. <laughs> Um, yes. you know, as well, it's not cheap by any means. Um, insurance doesn't cover, I mean, these days, especially it's not covered. Um, I mean, I got lucky. Most of my IUIs were covered. Um, but I had to pay for any medication, any other, you know, procedural, um, things that we had to go through was out of pocket. So, um, you know, it would be nice if insurance companies took that into, you know, perspective and, um, sure. really stepped up their game <laughs> for sure yeah but, we paid, yeah, we paid everything out of pocket so yeah it's crazy <laughs> it's very <laughs> expensive <laughs> yes. and you know you touched on a little bit um but you know if someone just found out that they have issues with their fertility um, you know, what would you say or encourage them? Cause you know, you said a support system, which yes, yes most definitely. Yeah. Um, maybe let's flip the script and say, what would you uh, encourage people not to do or try not to do in the process of, um, this whole journey that they're about to embark on? Oh, I would say what not to do would be to fall into the misconception of all the doctors are right. You know, they're going to, I mean, a lot of them do what's best for you, but a lot of them, they see so many people, um, so many couples, so many, you know, women, so many infertility journeys. Um, not every process is created equal. Um, everyone goes through their own process. Um, and if you feel like something needs to be you know, reevaluated or looked into further. Again, I would be my own advocate and, For you know, sure. say, you know, I'm not comfortable with this. Um, I think we should change this. You know, what do you think about this? Um, 
you know, don't just go into it saying, okay, you know, you know what you're doing. <laughs> go yeah. ahead. I'm, you know, your own guinea pig, <laughs> figure it out. Right. <laughs> right. It's so true. I mean, right. I've heard stories from others who have said that they've gone in with that mindset because they didn't know. And, you know, unfortunately they get, they go through loops and they spend so much time yeah. and spending money and it's unfortunate. So thankfully we have resources like stories, like such as yours and um, Instagram, where we can learn from other women who have gone before us and um, can kind of help, you know, help our, at least to know what kind of questions to ask and what to right. look out for, for sure. I agree. I know it helped me tremendously going into my journey to watch other girls go through their journey and ask the questions. And I didn't, you know, I tried respectfully with my doctor not to, you know, question them or anything, <laughs> but you know, I just was like, Hey, so what about this? And what about this? And, <laughs> right. and you know, whether, you know, he, you know, it, it just felt good for me to be able to voice that, you know? So yeah, that's really, really good information. Um, so yeah, so you were able to get your two, your two sweet babies from your first yes. IVF cycle, right? Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. That worked yeah. out really well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's great. We're crazy. I was like, well, we only have one left, so this better be it. Or we're not going through another one. <laughs> exactly. Cause it's a lot. I probably would have anyway, but at that time I was like, oh, I've so much defeat, so much heartache. I was like, I don't, I don't think I can do this again. Yeah. So. I mean, and you, you went through a lot of losses, unfortunately. So that makes the journey even harder. Does. Did you experience um, with your, with being pregnant, the trauma from the losses from before? Um, yeah, I actually, I'm still processing them. Um, I think a lot of it, um, you know, even after having our daughter, um, I just kind of put it in the back of my mind and um, didn't really process um, each loss as I should have. Um, but I just felt like, you know, she deserved 100% my time. And um, I felt unworthy of taking time away from her. So I definitely had um, postpartum depression. I think that, you know, is where a lot of that came from. Um, I had, a, you know, a lot of it with my, my son too. And that probably comes with the same thing. I kind of did the same ordeal, but um, I am in counseling and um, that is something we're addressing. So um, I obviously have, you know, a good, a good support system and, um, I wouldn't be able to do it without any of them. And, um, you know, I attribute our success in fertility to them as well. It, it did, it wasn't just me. It wasn't just doctors. It was, I mean, it takes a village. It seriously does. <laughs> yes. It really, yeah. really does. I'm so glad to hear that. And I, and, you know, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because there's a lot of women who have experienced, you know, losses. And, um, I, I was talking to someone recently and she was saying the same thing, you know, you just kind of like bury it deep down inside. And we, as women, we're so good of comp compartmentalizing, um, right. but at some point it does come back up. So oh, it's it really good. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> deal with not, it. It's not pretty, but it. it's awesome. Yeah. Do you by chance have an Instagram account that any, that you'd like to share or anything like that? Um, I do funny when you, um, we first started chatting at the beginning um, of all of this, I do have a YouTube channel, but I like you, oh. um, I started yeah. when we were trying to conceive, um, with our, I think it was at our fourth IUI was where I started, um, and just was, you know, tracking everything. Um, but I stopped after, I think like right before I had Alaric, my son, um, I just, mm -mm, that postpartum got me. So, yeah. <laughs> and again, yeah. I was like, I don't know where to go from here. I don't know what people right. want to see. I don't know what they want to hear about you know, so I have Instagram and I have a YouTube channel too. Um, cool. So if people want to yeah. learn more, um, I'd be happy to share more. I just, I don't know where to start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, what, what is your Instagram handle for those, if anyone who wanted to reach out to you? Sure. So it's at, or at Jen underscore Ray, R-A-Y-E underscore. Awesome. And then do you want to share your YouTube channel? <laughs> sure it's journey with jen 
Very good. Very good. I just like <laughs> to give the, the, you know, to put it out there just in case. And if not, then that's okay too. Right. <laughs> so um, thank you. Thank you so You're much Jen, for, for, you know, reaching out again and for wanting to share your story. Absolutely. No, thank you for having me again. Props to Nando, um, you know, for creating this whole idea. It's great. I'm happy to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy you're, you're a part of it. It's awesome.